It was founded in 1728 by the mathematician and astronomer Jai Singh, who aspired to make it the most wonderful city in India, and succeeded at least in making it the most unique. This main street is over 100 feet in width and about two miles in length, running in a straight line. In addition to being purely oriental in its atmosphere, Jaipur is one of the cleanest and most prosperous cities in India. The buildings are all painted in one uniform color, a rose pink, which reflects a soft and fascinating light. The shops run along both sides of the street, each being a single cell in a continuous arcade. The roof seem to provide a habitation for goats, and more particularly for monkeys, who skip about from window to window, helping themselves to anything and everything that suits their fancy. Perhaps there is no place in the world where birds and beasts live in closer proximity with mankind than they do here in Jaipur. The reason for this may be due to the fact that the Jain religion a more orthodox branch of Hinduism, which thrives here, prohibits the injuring or killing of anything that lives in flesh. The adherents of this religion, numbering about one million of India's population, would not so much as lift a finger to brush a fly or an insect from their baby's eyes. Moreover, the giants actually support beast hospitals where old or lame animals are housed and fed. These little tick birds, however, are not so religious, for their diet consists of the ticks and insects which inhabit the skins of dumb beasts. It is remarkable to note how little fear the animals and birds seem to have of each other, or of the human life that moves about them. Aside from the extremes of religious fanaticism, this kindness to dumb animals seems to reflect itself upon the people of Jaipur for they are of a contented and peaceful nature, living in a sort of bovine resignation to life as it chooses to deal with them and all that lives around them. Bad. No one has been able to prove just where the proverbial Ark of Noah anchored with its cargo of animals. But if we may be permitted to venture our guests, we would say Jaipur. For nowhere else in the world have we seen so many different types of animals mingling so freely with mankind. This leopard has a little growl for us, but for his master, he has all the gentleness of a kitten. On the road to Amber, the former capital of Jaipur, we are reminded of the facetious remark, when better bullock carts are built, India will build them. And now we arrive at the deserted city of Amber, where we will go for a ride on the Maharaja's elephant. to the Maharaja's palace on the back of one of his elephants lends an atmosphere to the journey that is typical of India. Our route takes us along one of the oldest roads in the world, leading from Jaipur through Amber and on to Delhi, a road over which has passed in sumptuous procession through centuries of time. Mughal emperors, Maharajas, princes, dancing girls, and countless other phantoms of oriental splendor, only to be supplanted in this day by groups of curious tourists from lands that were undiscovered when Amber was at the zenith of its power and glory. After a short journey, we come within view of Amber Palace, built about 400 years ago and abandoned in 1728 when the whole court of the Maharaja moved to Jaipur. There are several of these deserted palaces throughout India, which were built at enormous cost, and 
and then suddenly abandoned by the whim of an extravagant ruler who apparently enjoyed the thrill of building new palaces and new cities. The silence and repose of Amber is now emphasized by the wild peacocks, which are prone to inhabit the abandoned habitats of men. The grounds of the palace also provide a haunt for wild monkeys. It seems strange that with his uncanny resemblance to man, the monkey should have found almost no use in connection with human life, save to satisfy curiosity and to provide certain bits of information in man's search for the so-called missing link. Look closely and you will see an occasional baby monkey clinging to its mother. It is said that the attachment of the mother monkey to her young has no parallel in the whole animal kingdom, for only the death of a mother can possibly separate her from her baby. She brings into existence only one baby at a time, and like human babies, it is in a condition of utter helplessness for almost a year. Less fortunate than the wild monkeys of India are the ones that are caught by fakirs and trained with infinite patience for the amusement of the people. The Indian fakir, with his little animal circus, provides entertainment for the native Indian, even as the motion picture theaters provide entertainment for the masses in other countries. The camel card of His Highness, the Maharaja of Jaipur. Whoa! Of all the strange accidents, imagine a couple of camels dropping in on you during your Sunday drive. Fortunately, no one was seriously injured. After a moment of adjustment, the automobile and the camel cart go their respective ways. Little the worse for their experience. Nevertheless, this strange accident illustrates with a moral the fact that automobiles are out of place in Jaipur. Somehow it seems a pity that one little remote corner of the earth, where man and bird and beast live in perfect harmony with each other, could not be spared the encroachments of the machine age. And it is with this thought that we say farewell to colorful Jaipur. Thank <laughs> you.